Hello darlings and uh, today I'm talking to you about my roast chicken dinner pie. Basically um, I got this fabulous idea from a friend of mine called Helen who when I was talking about what to do with leftovers because obviously you've got a big roast chicken which we had I will show you the photo of that now. Which as you can see was absolutely delicious made by the lovely Simon. And what we normally have is obviously everybody gets a big portion of whatever and then we've got the chicken left over and what I was doing was just a stir fry which was just I mean it is delicious actually and I should do the stir fry recipe for you guys as well at one point but a friend of mine said oh we put ours in a pie and I thought what a fab idea I mean pastry just makes everything wonderful so I'm going to show you that the pie I make now this makes a roast chicken normally stretch for three meals for a family of four obviously it's up to you to depending on the portions bear in mind i have a teenager in the house and a preteen in the house so they're at that kind of age where the hormones are just making them eat and grow and eat and grow um so it it does feed literally a family of four with a with healthy appetites so um without further ado i shall get stuck in so the first thing i need to say to you to do because i'm using i'm just using the pastry that you buy in the shops the uh, ready rolled stuff just to save on my arthritic hands it is so easy to make your own shortcrust pastry i will in the description put a quick recipe for it if you've got a food processor it'll take you a matter of minutes and if you haven't and you've got a decent pair of hands it'll take you a matter of minutes it's really that simple but just for me just for an easy life oh i have the ready roll stuff and a pie dish casserole dish i normally use as well which is fine but i got this really lovely pie dish in the sale you don't mean my bargains if I, I find it and i'll put a link to it if you want to use it because it just looks really nice going to the table and something lovely so here we have it so simon fabulously he's he's our chicken remover got all this chicken from the chicken and uh i've already started prepping things so you wouldn't have to see me watch me doing this for ages and here we have simon's homemade yorkshire Yorkshire puddings which are just amazing and the peas and carrots which I usually get him to cut up small when he's serving them for the roast just so when I do this I don't have to cut them up again a bit cheeky I'm using my nicer dicer slicer to chop up the potatoes but again I'm sure it's perfectly simple for you to do it yourself again it's just to save my hands um you know it does seem a bit lazy but before i had problems with my hands i would do everything by hand no problem at all i did it all my life but now um i just look for what sort of helps me carry on doing what i love which is feeding my family so these things just give me that little extra bit of help um i don't know if you've ever seen this i'll put a link to one in the comments as well so you can see what it is but i've got this really fine uh, blade here they are super sharp so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch them very much. I just slice the um forum, I just slice the potato down the center and then pop it in, push down and bush. It goes into all the little bits I need. Just flinging potato everywhere with wild abandon. <sighs> anyway, yes. So I'm just going to do these last two potatoes. And as I said, I've already done most of the Yorkshires and I've got the stuffing now this is something else, else important now, it may seem really weird putting your entire dinner in a pie I must admit when I first mentioned it to the kids they were just kind of like oh and they are they were at the time really fussy eaters they did not eat the stuffing they were suspicious of Yorkshires <laughs> who's suspicious of Yorkshires they're just a gift from God um oh this is going to say so the Yorkshire I'm literally just slicing it thinly and then I'm going to chop it up into little bits and put it with this. But yeah, so they didn't like Yorkshire. So my kids didn't like Yorkshire puddings. And they didn't like the stuffing. It's just a general bog standard sage and onion packet stuffing. Um, I mean, you know, as I said, if you're really capable of uh, making your own stuffing, then that's fab. But a packet mix, no problem. So it really is... A personal choice again of whatever you have with your roasts we don't always have yorkshires with the roast chicken obviously i know yorkshire should be with the roast beef but simon makes such great yorkshire puddings that the kids always request them and it's like well fine he doesn't mind doing it then that's fabulous so as you can see i'm just chopping it up into very rough small squares about a centimeter but again you know it, it doesn't have to be like really tiny it's just i like the mixture to be 
bite size in the fact that everything is so small that you can get quite a an eclectic mix so all the flavors sort of join into one and you get a little bit of everything in each mouthful which i think is just adorably lush so that's that done i just got to the stuffing now the stuffing will crumble a bit in general so it is just kind of like roughly cut because this is not going to it's not going to keep its shape to be honest um but then again that's fine now, as i said they didn't like stuffing and um they weren't very keen on other bits and pieces but the weird thing was i thought to myself after the first few pies when i didn't put all these things and i thought we're really kind of wasting it because the stuffing would sit in the freezer and it would just not get um used and i forget about it and um, I didn't want to waste it. And so one day I thought, oh, do you know what? It tastes lovely with stuffing. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna tell anyone. I'm just gonna shove it all in and I'm not gonna say a word. Not that they were allergic to it, because obviously I wouldn't do that. That'd be dangerous. But um, yeah, so I chopped up the stuffing and I put it in with the chopped up Yorkshires, and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. Again, every time we had a roast, and I said, would you like a little bit of stuffing? No, don't like it. And I say, well, could you just try a little bit? And bless them, they were good sports. They did try. And they would try it and say they didn't like it. And it was like, oh, that's not true. I know you like it, but I can't really say anything because I didn't want to put them off the pies. So I just left it. I just put it in the pie to make it go further. And then I think it was about a year ago, I finally said to them, you do realise this is in every single chicken pie you've ever had? And they were like, oh my God. I was like, yeah. Still won't have it though, with their meals. Crazy. So it does go in the pie. At least they accept it in the pie. So let me just wipe my hands with apparently 70,000 bits of kitchen towel. Didn't want me to take that much off. Sorry, trees. Okay, so we've got everything cut up. And as usual, a bit of a mess it's a bit difficult while I'm sitting down so what I have to do first uh -huh, now I've got a new hob anybody who's uh, had a look at the bakes recipe link up there if you want to have a look and also link in the description if you want to have a look after this video um, we'll know that the last hob we had just did not seem to want to do what it wanted to do what it needs to do rather sorry it did what it wanted to do but not what it needed to do so what I've got here is a brand new one. Fancy, and I haven't used it yet. So I do do baptisms of fire on these things. I take you along with me for the journey. We're going to be trying this one today. Yeah, you and me, we're gonna be doing it. We're gonna have a go, we'll see how it works. So join me on this journey with a splash of oil in our lovely frying pan and see if I can get this one working now. Whoa. Did I press it on? That's turning it off. That's turning it on. Now. Oh, now it's going up. Ooh. Oh. Okay, I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> you go, just in case it explodes. I mean, a parent left. Yeah, see ya. Okay, now we're back on the video. That was a bit scary. Simon and I didn't know what was going on. It wouldn't turn on. And then it turned on and... Everything seems to be happening, but I'm not quite sure. Oh God, when you take it off the thing, it doesn't want to, doesn't go on anymore. This is so confusing. Right, so anyway, and we're back. Um, we finally managed to get this working somehow. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think I had the child lock on, which sounds about right really, doesn't it? So without further ado, I'm going to get this oil heated up in this really thick heavy base pan which seems to take ages to heat up but this should should start heating up I've popped it up to 160 so what we're going to need and I was going to say to you we also use the gravy keep that safe that is very very important um, and we put that in right at the end as we do obviously the chicken and I've got some water so while I'm waiting for that to heat up what I'm going to do is get my pie dish oh, and show you how to line this. So you literally just get your pastry on the paper or if you've done it by hand, um, roll up the pastry on the rolling pin. Now this doesn't fit exactly. Um, I don't know if you can see on that side there's a gap. But I'll show you what we do. It's real 
sort of make it make it work make do and mend really as it is for the um bits of seizing from the stuff figure in there don't worry as it is from this so what i would do is get a knife oh, get this up get a knife sharp knife or a dinner knife anything that's going to definitely cut the pastry and go like round like that all around the edge away from you and as you do that you'll see the pastry start to come off fabulous and with this extra pastry we just go find the bits that have extra that are missing and just oh, so i do it this way you'll be able to see and just stick it in basically patchwork it that's what we're doing and when you patchwork it you're basically getting what you need in the pie dish and then and this because you could just patchwork around the edge because this bit is going to get covered this bit around the edge here all of this is going to get covered so it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be pretty it really doesn't it just has to go over the edge of the lip of the uh, pie dish put that around that way and just stick right so although it looks pretty you know mishmashy it will do the trick so now we've got all around the lip covered and the base covered there's a big bubble there actually just gonna say if you have a big bubble it can expand in the oven again it doesn't affect the flavor it just means you get a big bubble underneath your pastry but it's absolutely fine oh and the pastry dish is greased but it'll say that in the description anyway so yeah a little bit of bubble under there it's absolutely fine Give it a bit of a stab that's okay right so now just go around the edges and cut the excess pastry off as you're doing it going down it will make sure the pastry stays down so there we have one lined pastry just nice and simple so i'm going to put that over there now keep the pastry we're going to need the little bit left over and the other piece of pastry ooh, not enough room is here to cover it so i will talk you through that in a minute so this is oh this is a bit hot safety this is amazing take it off the hole but it just stops instantly so this might splatter yay the other one it didn't do that i think it was for like a doll's house or something i don't know it just didn't work but this is lovely and sizzly look at that oh the smell is just fabulous just checking i've got smoke alarms in here i've just realized <laughs> it sets this off it might be a bit of a problem anyway so i'm just basically getting this to be a bit glassy i'm not caramelizing it it doesn't have to be caramelized for ages right this is actually heating up super duper quickly and doing really really well so this is actually starting to brown them already wow this is really powerful so the last one we had on the highest heat i'm just going to pop a little bit more oil in this so i didn't really put a huge amount in at the beginning because i wasn't sure how long it was going to take but the last one we had it on the highest heat and it just did nothing it was a right nightmare but this one ab fab so next thing we do we're just going to stir fry all of this in and again we're not cooking it we're just warming it through so it's not going to be just trying to get this off oh all that potato there get that out it's not going to be you know we're not cooking it again don't need to do that it's just so everything is warm because i put it into the um the pie warm and i know some people will put warm won't put warm into um into uh pastry that hasn't been pre-cooked i don't bother pre-cooking it works perfectly well i don't get a soggy bottom um and you know it does the job so the next thing i'm going to do is ooh, pop in some stock i'm just going to put i don't need all of this actually i'm just going to put some of this in here a little bit of water because what i want to do this is all the stock cubes i'm just mixing into this water here very quickly i really kind of want it just to as i said to heat through and not uh, i'm not stir frying it so i'm not trying to get it all crispy or anything i want it heated so what i do is i put water in and i'm only 
need a bit more water than that, actually. I'll measure this out for you. This is one of these things I do by sight because I've done this so many times. But I'm measuring it as I'm going along for you so you know what's happening. Just pop the stuff again on top. Give it a bit of a move around. Just pop everything out of the way. And the water, as well as sort of rehydrating everything, it steams more than it fries, stops it burning, basically. So I'm just going to put that there like that. Turn that down. Because I don't want it to, I just want it to heat through. What temperature is that on? Oh, have I turned the timer on? Oh, I don't know what I'm, I seriously, I don't know what I'm doing. I've accidentally turned the timer on. But I've turned it off now. Right, so that's going fine and that's lovely and that's just warming through with a little bit of water. Might pop a little tad more in because it seems to have been absorbed by everything. Lovely chaplain. So the reason I said keep this bit of pastry is just to make things look pretty. Well, I've got the pastry in the paper that it came from. Now if you've done it by hand at home you'll have a rolling pin anyway to fold it out so you could just use your rolling pin as normal just for ease. I cover mine um, with a greasy paper. If you are rolling out at home and you're finding it's just sticking too much to the rolling pin, you can roll it between two layers of greaseproof proof paper or two layers of cling film. And that will just help you to not get anything stuck to it. So anyway, that's that done. It's not terribly even, but that'll do. I've got a load of different cutters. They're all different shapes, sizes, things. I mean, I like to bake, so obviously I've got lots of them. You don't have to do this. Um, but if you do happen to have a cutter lying around, and I will put a link to that as well if you want one, I just cut out little patterns so that when we have covered the food, the, the pie tin, sorry, when we have covered the pie, there we go, um, I could decorate it because it just makes such a difference I think I mean again if you don't want to you could just you know make a hole and crimp the edges that would be really lovely if you don't want to bother with the cutter get a fork and crimp the edges or use your fingers just to push down all the way to make a little pattern around the edge and you've got yourself a perfectly wonderful pie but for me because I've got all these cutters I mean this one is a is it a dog rose? I don't even know. It's a flower of some sort, which I would normally cut fondant, uh, use it with cutting fondant to get flowers for a cake. But obviously I'm just using it for this right now. And I'll just do, can I do one more? If I squish that out with my hands. Oh, she says to fling it everywhere. I probably can. And that's it really. I mean, if you've got more time to spare, you can cut more out. Oh, this is going over the top with moisture. So, there we go. I'm just going to leave those to one side for a minute and go back to this. This doesn't fit, by the way. This didn't, you know, frying pans, they don't come with lids. I don't get it. So, I've had to use a lid from another pan. Right, this is actually ready. God, this is amazing. Oh, she says, forget it. This is amazing. It's done the job quicker than my hob. It's like super speed. Everything is, wow, heated through. So, I've just turned it off even though the heat's going to be going through that because it's all heated in there. I need to put this over here, excuse me. Right, so at this point, what I would do is get a trivet. So give me a second. Right, so I thought actually better to get a tea towel than a trivet because there's just a bit of water on there. Ooh. Um, it'll keep a little bit more stable as I'm moving around, she says, it not moving with her. There we are. So this is the point where I add the gravy. There's not a huge amount left, but that's okay because I did put the extra moisture in. But this way, it, adding the gravy cold means you don't boil the gravy away. If you add it when the food is cooking, what happens is it just evaporates and you've just lost so much of the moisture that you need for the pie. So at the pie being this heat, and I said I haven't added the chicken yet, but the pie being at this heat means that the gravy just melts in to the mixture. And another, a lot of pies, they put in flour and they put in, um, you know, thickeners like corn flour and stuff as well. Doesn't need it. When you've got the potatoes, 
they oh dear, it starts flicking everything so this pan is a little bit too small when you got the potatoes they actually disintegrate that is super hot um and thicken it up for you so you've got this really gorgeous flavor all the way through now if you've ever tried cooking cooked chicken in a stir fry you'll know it falls to pieces it's very fragile once it's cooked so i'm going to do this in layers so that the chicken will cook along with the pie along with the cooking but it'll keep its shape so when you serve it you actually get chunks of chicken rather than fibers of chicken which is a bit mm. so i'm just going to put this in here this is quite a lot actually i would normally have done this in my casserole dish but i thought i'd put it in the pie dish to make it look pretty but the pie dish is considerably smaller than my casserole dish so we might need might need to have um quite a tower on this but it will not go to waste but you can see how much you get left over it's incredible she says flinging chicken everywhere again it's very difficult <laughs> to work like this i think most chefs will probably fling bits everywhere so you're kind of layering it up like a trifle to be honest um and so you're going to get chicken in every slice and you're going to get this gorgeous mix in every slice of everything so you get a mouthful of a roast dinner with every bite you might though one of those people who a friend of mine used to be like that where they eat things um in order and there's nothing wrong with that but um you know they'll have like the peas first and then they'll have the potatoes and then they'll have the chicken and um i personally love to have lots of different flavors so but that, that said uh, there is someone i know who does eat like that and they've had this and they've loved it so if you're someone who's thinking oh no i like it all separate i don't like it all to be together give it a go i don't think you'll be disappointed because the flavor is just so lovely it's just all there and then what we do is when we've cooked this just dragging things over there. when we've cooked this um we will have it with um you can have it with mashed potato and peas or chips and peas or just vegetables it's such a hearty pie you might not want to have an extra carb with it but if you do you know you want to really make it stretch like i said this will feed us two dinners for two days so out of one extra large chicken or even when we've had a small chicken because because there's so much flavor in it if you haven't got as much chicken as i had it still tastes great it's still a really hearty pie with a lovely meaty flavor which you've got from the gravy so if you find yourself oh my gosh i've only got a fraction of the meat that lissy had don't worry about it honestly the flavors in here are so fantastic it'll taste meaty regardless of the level of chicken you've got in here i've got to try and get these off the edges because they'll get stuck in the pastry right so now what i need to do is to get some uh, milk and a pastry brush from simon so i should be back in a second hello and we're back with the milk and we haven't got the pastry brush available at the moment i don't know why maybe it's gone out for the night but anyway for now a piece of kitchen towel will do these are two bits of kitchen towel folded up um once twice three times a lady and it does the job it really does just dip it into the milk or if you prefer an egg wash you could do that as well which is just basically um a single egg beaten and then you dip it in as i've just done with the milk and just dab it around the edges and this is going to seal the pastry from your second bit of pastry here now if you haven't taken this out of the fridge on time and it's cracked i don't know if you could see there's some faint cracks there um just pinch them very gently with your fingers and that will pull them back together very very gently just a little pinch just a little pinch them together and that will put them back together now this might not work in one go um no we're going to have to cut it now it's not going to be the prettiest of things just get my knife 
We'll have to clean that actually. Give me a second. So I can just cut this pastry properly. And again, make do amend. I mean, obviously, if you're doing this with your own pastry, it'll be a lot neater. But here we go. Just get the other end, line it up, and it's absolutely fine. Now, don't worry if you've managed to get a cut out of uh, your little little bits of pastry, because this will all be hidden when we um, finish it up. And I will show you how. But I mean, as I said, all my videos are more about the flavour. The flavour has got to be the most important thing. I've had plenty of meal, which looks fantastic, from some really amazing restaurants. And they've just not, they've just not come up for flavour. And I just think to myself, what's the point? You're eating this to you know obviously get sustenance but also to enjoy it eating is a should be an enjoyable experience and if you're not sort of feeling the flavor the cakes like cardboard or whatever then you know what's the point so this is going to be delicious no matter how it looks now what i do with these let me just get where is it there it is my little my little uh, kitchen towel brush gently very gently do not drag this or push on top of this pie with this brush because what's happening now is because the filling is warm it's starting to melt the fat in the pastry absolutely fine don't panic it'll be okay i've just realized i should have actually crimped it before i did this but i was just desperate to get these on so what i'm going to do with these little pretty bits is put them in a line down the edge and they hide the fact that the pie lid wasn't long enough so there we go it looks you know quite sweet adds a little thing now crimping you could just use your thumb and your finger to crimp or just push your thumb all the way around the only thing i will say with this is don't push too hard because then the um pie will come up and as i said i should have done this before the milk because it's made it all squishy but it's okay it's all right, we're all friends here. You're not gonna judge me, are you? If you are, please don't. Right, so I'm just crimping this up now. So I'm just basically getting my fingers and going like that. Not as wide as that, but just little crimps around the edge, just to make a little risen bit. I don't know if you can see the crimping on this. It's very rustic, it's very homemade. That's what it is, you know? I'm not a Michelin chef, I'm just somebody who loves a good, good flavour, good taste, and, uh, you know, wants to feed my family food that's affordable and food that's delicious and food that is going to be doable, if that's a word, because quite often I haven't got time to go and boil up some fancy something in a sous vide or whatever, and I just want to... Um, make my food go as far as I can with healthy and tasty ingredients and this is it it's <laughs> it's pretty rustic but this is going to feed us for two days for a family four we cut it in half divide it into eight that will feed us with some chips and a whole load of veggies or just veggies um, and again the next day we you know pop it in the oven or in the microwave if you so please just to heat it through and we have it again with chips and veggies and it is amazing that we paid um it was a very cheap chicken i would try and get free range if i could but this particular day it got subbed and it was five pound chicken so five pound chicken has gone for three dinners between a family of four so it has fed 12 people which is pretty cool i'm gonna pop this in the oven and i shall come back when it is done oh one last thing i'm gonna do before i go make a little hole in the top so the steam can escape if you don't do that little wobbly hole there the top will puff up which is fine it looks really impressive i remember i had to do that for my uh for, I think for my O-level exam, I'm that old, it's O-levels. But, you know, for this, we really just wanted to stay together and have the pastry set on the food so it becomes this really nice full pie. So the whole is just to stop it expanding and puffing out and being this big weird round dough. So that's it, pop it in the oven and we're done. See you in a moment when it's finished. Hi there, and we are back with the pie. It was in a bit too long. 
uh, left it in just a little bit too long, but I was doing another recipe at the same time. So uh, I heard the timer got carried away, and then it was like, ah, oh, the pie! So the time I put on the uh, description will be the correct time. Um, it's not, it's not, you know, the end of the world. It's just a little bit browned on the edges, but it still looks absolutely delicious. So I'm going to cut it now, but the first slice of pie is always the messiest. So I'm going to do my very best. As you can see from the hole in the top, the air has escaped. That crispy pastry. The air has escaped, so the pastry has sat very nicely on top of the pie and not risen and gone into this great big dome. So, oh, this is, as I said, quite difficult to always get the first slice out. It's a bit of a nightmare. The second slice is prettiest. But I'm just going to take a slice out just to show you um, how we would serve it on here. And just scoop it up. And you can see that it's got all that chicken and loveliness. No soggy bottom. I can't actually show you because it all went onto the plate. But it is nice and crispy underneath. If I could just show you. I don't know if the camera could pick that up at all. But that is a nice brown crispy piece of pastry from the base of the pie. Which, as I said, the first slice is messy. But it is. Let me just get this out here. And pop this on. The chicken has held its shape perfectly. Beautifully hot. There is steam just flooding out of here. And we've got a gorgeous load of pie centre. I'm just going to leave that there. don't know if you can see the inside of that. I might show you, actually. Put that on that side there. This is still super duper hot, so I'm going to use the oven gloves. So I don't know if you're able to see inside the pie. Uh, holding it up there to show you. And you can see that it is absolutely fantastic. And then, as I said, I've put all the... Just move that to one side. And here is the plate. I said we have it with chips and peas, um, pie contents. There's so many there, it's all flooded out. And then just with some gravy. And, you know, you've got yourself a beautiful roast chicken pie. Honestly, it's just so wonderful. Roast chicken dinner pie, actually. So enjoy. I hope you like it. If you make it, let me know. Remember, you could do this with beef, with lamb, with anything you fancy that you've had with your um, meal. Uh, remember, you can omit things if you want. And remember, you can add things uh, if you do put in, say, if you have it with pork and you have some applesauce, maybe put some dollops of applesauce in amongst it if you want to get a little surprise of that all the way through. Or leave the applesauce to whoever likes it who doesn't. Um, same with the lamb one. Um, I know my husband likes mint sauce with it, so maybe some odd pockets of mint sauce. But again, make it your own. Do what you like, add what you like, take what you like out. If you make it, let me know how you go. If you have any problems, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm always happy to give you any answers to this. I've been making this for so long. I've gone through all the other problems many years ago, so I know how things work if there's an issue. And um, I'm going to go off and enjoy this now with my family. So, uh... As I said, if you do this, please take some photos if you don't mind and tag me in them. I love seeing them. I will put them on social media because I'm so proud of all the stuff that everyone's been doing so far. It's just fantastic. Enjoy yourself while you do it. Have some fun. Please don't take anything too seriously. And I really am so chuffed that you stayed with me to watch this video. Take care of yourselves and I hope to see you on another video soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.